Hello, my name is Wildstag, and today I am going to be talking about this book, The Open Space of Democracy. It's by Terry Tempest Williams, who is an amazing poet and outdoors writer. She is one of those people that ran in the same circles with Edward Abbey. She's very um, reverent of the Southwest and of... Uh, her home state, Utah, which is partially why she um, was in those same circles. I bought this book used at a place called La Playa Books in San Diego. Uh, here's a bookmark of theirs. It has, uh, let's see if this gets the information. This is the other side. It was a pretty neat little hole in the wall. Um, I was there visiting uh, some family and with some little cousins of mine, went to a used bookstore, found this uh, pretty neat book. Um, in a previous video, I talked about um, the reviews, the comments from other um, writers that are usually, you know, the praise on the back ha uh, on the back cover of the book. Noteworthy praise. Uh, I'll read it out. Terry Tempest Williams equates the majesty of our nation's wild places with the essence of America's democracy. Her inspiring essays are thought-provoking reminders of the responsibility each of us has to protect and defend these precious gifts. It's labeled President Jimmy Carter. At least in my lifetime, Jimmy Carter's kind of been an inspiration, not necessarily for his presidency, but his, you know, the work he's done, how genuine and wholesome he is after. And um, it's kind of something that shows in this book. His praise of her is very on point and accurate. The book opens up with um, the chapter Commencement, wherein she's a commencement speaker for um, a school in 2003. My copy of this book has a lot of, uh, you know, it's used. It's got some wear on the cover and all. It's also got some underlining. I'm not sure if the person was that had this book before was a student or a teacher. There's a couple um, notes that kind of indicate one way or the other. I'm not entirely certain. There's a lot of quotes in this section from other uh, poets that she works in well. She says she had 15 minutes to speak from my... Uh, sorry. I had 15 minutes to speak from my heart to these young people on their graduation day. My heart was pounding. I'm not entirely certain. University of Utah, graduating seniors in 2003. She was receiving an honorary doctorate degree in the humanities, and among those graduating was her niece. Throughout the commencement, she talks about what democracy means to her, but she goes on, um, the commencement is interspersed with her thoughts, um, her personal thoughts that weren't part of the commencement speech itself. The final paragraph she has before she starts ruffling feathers, she says, is, I offer you these words from my mentor in conservation, Marty Murray, who grew up on the Alaskan frontier and became one of the great advocates for the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. On my graduation from college, she sent me a letter. Don't worry about what you will do next. If you take one step with all the knowledge you have, there is usually just enough light shining to, sh to show you the next step. I believed her. She continues um, in her speech about the polarization of politics. She even quotes Abraham Lincoln. What constitutes the bulwark of our own liberty and independence? It is not our crowning battlements, our bristling seacoasts, our army and our navy, navy. These are not our alliance against tyranny. All of these may be turned against us without making us weaker for the struggle. Our alliance is in the spirit which prized liberty as the heritage of all men in all lands everywhere. Destroy the spirit and you have planted the seeds of de despotism at your own doors. Familiarize yourself with the chains of bondage and you prepare your own limbs to wear them. 
accustomed to trample on the rights of others, and you have lost the genius of your own independence, and become the fit subjects of the first cunning tyrant, the first cunning tyrant who rises among you. The, the major part that I really appreciate in this is she starts asking what the open space of democracy looks like. There is room for dissent. There is room for differences. The open space of democracy provides justice for all living things, plants, animals, rocks and rivers, as well as human beings. It is a landscape that encourages diversity and discourages conformity. Democracy can also be messy and chaotic. It requires patience and persistence. In the open space of democracy, every vote counts and every vote is counted. The open space of democracy inspires wisdom and the dignity of choice. When democracy disappears, we are asked to accept the way things are. This whole chapter is a thesis for the rest of the, the book. She herself is anti-war. And a lot of the book, the meat of the content, is about that. She is a believer in personal action. Personal action is an important part of democracy. And what she does in this book is illustrate how that works. She uses that example of her, um, her mentor, uh, Muri, in the next chapter, Ground Truthing. She goes up to that wildlife refuge and experiences it. I think specifically her husband and one or two other people. A funny thing about this, uh, you know, used copy, I found some glitter stuck to one of the pages just now. It's just the funny things you find in used books. She repeats throughout this book in various passages her mentality that in the open space of democracy conservation is first and foremost. The second chapter of Ground Truthing is about Congress's attempt to expand the wildlife refuges options into drilling for gas and oil and that's what that chapter is about for the most part her refusal to accept it and her desire to protect that land lastly this third chapter engagement is a lot is about very personal things in not just the same way that the previous chapters were in much of this chapter, engagement, she appears to be living out of country. And she says at one point, As an American in Florence, I wondered, how do we walk with the rest of the world when our foreign policies seem to run counter to the rising global awareness of a world hungry for honest democracy? It's a hard question. And it's something I really love about this, is how she in this simple book forces you to ask questions of yourself and of others. What does democracy mean to you? What are you willing to do to defend it? She says that the First Amendment, the freedom of speech, is something she would die, uh, die for. And that is what is relevant to her needs. The book itself is amazing. It's short. Um, I say that. It's about 100 pages long. And it's not a big book. The, the text isn't small. There's a lot of blank space on the pages. The, like, I, like I showed you, like the book, the cover, isn't much bigger than my hand. It's, it's a small book very digestible, very easy to read it in short segments. It is something I encourage you to pick up. If you find it in used bookstores, you know, congratulations. If not, you know, buy it new. It's worth 
the money. It's according to this $8. I paid $5 for it. I would pay $8 for it. It is important. And I think what we need, what all young people, old people, whatever demographic you fit into, what we need is to ask these hard questions about our environment, our government. Open Space of Democracy by Terry Tempest Williams is a really good book. Check it out. I'm Wildstag, and thank you for listening to another used book review.